Just let her go, let her run on where she wanders over land, under sky, keep her free. That's what she owns, that's what she knows, that's why the proud man still ponders, is it all for her or for me? Reach for the sun, touch the earth, for the one life and death, to the joy of her birth, bring the sorrow and pain from the proud man. not meant for you or for me. Let her alone, let her go. In the hills of our good land, let her wild heart live on, keep her free. people called her cougar, or panther, or puma, or sometimes painter, sometimes catamount, or just plain mountain lion. By whatever name, she was what she was, the big cat of North America. began, the story of Sita, the mountain lion, at home with her kittens, at peace with the world. Her mate was a big tom, a good-looking animal, three years old and 140 pounds, six feet 11 inches from nose to tail.
The playfulness of these big cats is something good to see. They just seem to enjoy each other's company. Yet, this is only natural, since cougars, once mated, tend to stay together for life. But whenever the toms set out to go hunting, they would part company. Out on the range, he might be gone for days, might travel for miles. But Sita, meantime, would stay close to the den, near at hand to her kittens. Right now, they were more important than anything else in her life. kittens are no different from any other kittens when it comes to being curious. And to these young ones, the outside world looked mighty big and interesting and even sort of tempting. But as anyone could see, they weren't really ready to go around exploring on their own. Not just yet. In the high country, the Tom returned to an old haunt of his, a favorite hunting ground. The territory of the cougar is sometimes a hundred miles around the boundaries. Fact is, he carries a memorized map of every butte and mesa, every canyon and crag in the back of his head. And by habit, he makes a regular swing through the country he's got staked out. So the Tom moved on. All the things that made him a good cat and a good hunter were no use at all in the water. A cougar, it was pretty clear, belonged where he belonged, dry-footed and on land. Long ago, when Sita had first staked out this territory, there'd been a night when she'd heard a strange yet interesting kind of sound. Like all cats, she'd been curious and had to investigate. And ever after that night, she came often to listen. Vamos al baile y verás que bonito Donde se alumbran con veinte linternas Donde se bailan las danzas modernas Donde se goza de tanto vacilón Y quiereme Jesucita, y quiereme por favor Y mira que soy tu amante y tu seguro servidor Y quiereme Jesucita, y quiereme por favor Y mira que soy tu amante y tu seguro servidor
vamos al baile y verás qué bonito Donde se alumbran con 20 linternas Donde se bailan las danzas modernas Donde se goza de tanto vacilón Quiet, Pego. It's only our friend Sita. Hello, Sita. Where have you been? ¿Cómo has estado, gatito? We have missed you. Y quiereme, Jesucita, y quiereme, por favor. Y mira que soy tu amante y seguro servidor. Y quiereme, mi chuchita, y quiereme, por favor. Y mira que soy tu amante y tu seguro servidor. Roberto. Don't you say hello to your friend? Eh? Hey, Sita. Here we have a new one. Este niñito. <laughs> Here comes also to hear the music. al baile y verás qué bonito donde se alumbran con 20 linternas donde se bailan las danzas modernas donde se goza de tanto vacilón y quiereme Jesucita quiereme por favor mira que soy tu amante y seguro servidor y quiereme Jesucita y quiereme por favor y mira que soy tu amante y tu seguro servidor The sheep herder was used to Sita's silent comings and goings. He knew that this was the cougar's way, and he wouldn't change it even if he could. He lived as part of this land, sort of staying in step with all its creatures. Etio, the sheep herder, was the only human being Sita had ever known. But there would soon come into her life Another man. Another kind of man, that is. A hunter named Hugh McCrae was about to move into Sita's territory. He was good at his trade, a real professional, specializing in mountain lions. McCrae knew every landmark for hundreds of miles. He had eyes sharp as a hawk's, and people sometimes said that he could actually think like a lion. moment, he was on a scouting trip, looking for clues as to the mountain lion's whereabouts. He knew their secret ways, and he knew they liked the backcountry, so he pushed his nose into every remote cranny and canyon. When he saw a deer, he knew he was on the right track. This meant this was lion country for sure.
Sita, the huntress, knew what it meant to be the hunted. Okay, let's go back. McCray had found what he wanted. Now he knew Sita's hangout. The landmark known as Devil's Arch marked the place. covered many miles on his rounds. As skillful a hunter as he was, it was sometimes a long time between kills. And it was not at all unusual for him to go many days without having any luck. generally favored the deer. For the cougar is not all that fast. And for every kill he makes, he has probably made several tries that leave him with nothing to show. Sita's friend Etio walked his flock through the pasture lands in the ageless way of all shepherds before him. Easy, Tip, easy, easy. He did as his father had done, and his father's father, back in the red hills of Spain. They go! Run them! But easy! But this land, the sandstone hills of the American Southwest, was Etio's land. He was part of it, and he moved in its rhythm, not hurting any of its creatures. Not conquering or subduing the land or spoiling it, but living with its natural wonders from day to day. Though all the creatures of the canyons and the mesas were Etio's friends, the poisonous Gila monster had not yet asked to be one of the company. <laughs> you don't want this one for our friend, huh? Pego! Go back to work.
day, eh, Dio? Come on, Lava. Muy bien, gracias. Say, what happened to the bridge up above? She washed away in the big rains last year. You cross where the sheep are, it's only a couple of feet deep. Okay. You go to a Joe Bigley's ranch? Yeah, I got a hunting party coming up. I'll be putting them up at Joe's for a while. Say, have you seen any mountain lions around here? Yes, I have seen one. She's my friend, Sita. Female? Yeah. More than likely, she's the one I'd spotted over Devil's Arch. You seen a Tom with her? Are you going to kill her, Mac? Well, I'm going to catch her. Then I'll put her in a safe place where clients can find her without any trouble. I'll leave the rest to them. She will have kittens now. If your hunters kill her, they kill the kittens. Edio, you don't seem to understand that we work different sides of the street. Let's let it go at that, all right? Pretty soon there will be no more lions, man. Uh, could be. Well, are you gonna move those sheep so I can get across? Pego, move him. Take care of yourself. Tom Cougar returned to his kill, bringing Sita with him. The Cougar's sense of property and possession is unusually strong. But on this occasion, the Tom was in for a surprise. Rightfully, the cougar's kill. And to prove the point, he was going to have to take it back. Number two to one, the bear suddenly decided he'd be wiser to do his foraging somewhere else. Someplace peaceful and quiet without snarling cats in it. About once every three weeks, Joe Bickley, the owner of the sheep Etio tended, drove out to Etio's camp with grub and supplies. Rather than send out one of the hands, Joe liked to do this chore himself. It was good, pass the time of day with a man who talked to mountain lions. Well, it looks okay, Etio. Bring them in next week for shearing. Hey, 
Joe. You got a hunting party coming, isn't it? Yeah. A couple of businessmen from Denver. Max boarding them at my place. He told me he saw you at Little Creek. He's going to hunt my friend Sita. Look, Etio. I'm not crazy about dude hunting parties, but I can use the money. Maybe he'll get some other cat. Why do they want to kill it, Joe? This man from Denver. You really asking? Look, Etio. To them, it isn't killing. It's just a sport. Like a, a turkey shoot. Only they can tack up the prize in a trophy room someplace. They're just trying to get away from home or business or something. Sita has a family now. Oh. She won't come here anymore to listen when I play. She comes here? With the sheep? We tell the day this way. Two weeks and then she comes. Oh. <laughs> my friends like the music. It's not fine music as my father would play, but they like it. Hey, Roberto. You like the music? Huh? Roberto. <laughs> he don't talk much, does he? At night, he talks. <laughs> I'll bet he does. Well, I guess you got everything you need, huh? Oh. Riccio, guys like them fellas from Denver, mostly they can't hit the side of a barn door. Sometimes they go home without any line and they're happy anyway. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Etio cuidate. Tu también, Joe. Joe Bickley's news was not good. Etchio could feel it in his bones. Things were not going well for his friend Sita. McCray had discovered her haunts. A hunting party definitely was coming. And soon Etchio figured the country would echo to the fearful sound of baying hounds. Sita's mate generally stayed clear of man and his works. He'd found that things like pastured sheep meant dogs, and possibly guns and bullets that brought pain. But a stray lamb, that seemed like a different matter. Legitimate prey and easy to take. There you are. I'm coming, don't worry. Nobody's gonna hurt you. You see the little thing? Sita, is that you? Ah, you are not Sita. You are the husband.
You're hunting, eh? No one blames you, amigo. We must eat to live. Go in peace. We will do the same. Thing. They didn't hunt lions that way in my day. They never got paid to hunt lions in your day. <laughs> the rooms are all clean now. Your party coming the end of the week? Saturday noon. Look, Mac, uh, if these fellas want beer and stuff, that don't come with the price of the room. I know that, Joe. As a matter of fact, I'm going to town right now to pick up that stuff. <laughs> Say, Mac, you tell them fellas you're going to catch a lion so they can run it? Yeah. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, they'll get their money's worth, all right. I'll give the cat a head start. A couple hundred yards, huh? Well, it depends how fast the cat is. Beats me what some people will pay good money for. All right, you fellas, pipe down. You gonna rope this cat, Mike? No, I'm gonna try something else this year. Here, let me show it to you. There, you see that? What is it? A tranquilizer. You shoot the cat with that, and within a few minutes, it's as tame as a kitten. Then you just pick it up and haul it home. That's lion hunting, huh? It's a living joke. Makes it easy. Easy on the cat, too. Well, I'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, Mac. Oh, Barney, Max gonna catch his cat first thing in the morning. You go along with him. He'll start out about six. Okay, Joe. Yeah. Amigos de mi camada, yo les vengo a noticiar que la mula que ensillaba ya no la vuelvo a ensillar. ¿Qué dice, amigo? No digo nada. Ahí les dejo esa mulita que salió bien enseñada. Puede con un solo tercio y hasta con carga cerrada. What do you say, my friend? I say nothing. What do you say, my friend? <laughs> I say nothing. La mula que yo ensillé. 
ya Valencia, mi compañero. El gusto que a mí me quede es que yo le ensille primero. ¿Qué dice, amigo? No digo nada. Y aquí va la despedida mirando una mapolita. Aquí se acaban cantando los versos de la mulita. What do you say, my friend? I say nothing. El gusto que a mí me queda es que yo le ensille primero. ¿Qué dice, amigo? No digo nada. Y aquí va la despedida mirando una mapolita. Aquí se acaban cantando los versos de la mulita. What do you say, my friend? I say nothing. Instinctively, the cats knew it wasn't smart to stay together. By splitting up, they might throw the dogs off, and in the end, both get away. And so Sita went one way, the Tom another. On purpose, the Tom made himself the decoy, laying an open trail across the rocks.
about four or five hours. It'd be dark by then. Get away those hounds, you're tired. You got a hand at that old cat. He's got a lot of heart. He sure does. And that's the kind I like. We'll go after him again tomorrow sometime. All right. The last big leap had been too much. The tranquilizer had done its deadly work. Cedar's mate had missed his footing and had fallen to his death on the rocks below. would change. Loneliness would come, and the long nights with a sad heart. And across her days, the long, long shadow of McCrae, the lion hunter. Sita followed a lonely path, bearing a double burden. With her mate gone, she had to be family provider and family protector both. Hers was the full-time chore of finding food for three hungry kittens, whose appetites seemed to grow faster than their bodies. she extended her range as game got scarcer near the den. Yet for all that, she couldn't wander off too far. And so it came about that she hunted whatever she could find, wherever she could find it. settle their own arguments. Cedar was off into the field again. No telling how long it might be to the next lucky catch. Meanwhile, three bundles
cells of energy, newly fortified with nourishment, set out to work some of it off. The fact that they weren't supposed to leave the premises made little difference now. The outside world was calling. young things must learn by experience. And for all such, there must be a first time for everything. A first ducking, a first river to cross, a first stranger met on the high road of life. So is a river toad. What of that? Why not greet him with friendly enthusiasm? Of course, how's a fellow to know without being told that he wears a bad-tasting coating that can curl up the tonsils? He not only tastes bad, he tastes horrible. Yuck! Hear his fortune tonight. Señora Tortuga. Usted conejito. Señor Raven. <laughs> Let the cars decide. This is like you, Roberto. Look. This is like you, Pego. <laughs> Shall I?
Shall I tell my own fortune? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Sita, you're here. ¿Cómo estás, gatito? You've come at a good time. I have the magic cards that know everything. I will tell your fortune. Come take your usual place. We will tell the fortune of Sita. This is the tree of life, Sita. We will see what it says. First card is the tower. This is not good to start. Maybe I will play some music, okay? Everyone would like to hear music? Well, the tower. She means that we have things ahead we cannot see. But that is life, Sita. Yes, that is life. Things we cannot see. Justice. But she's reversed. This is not good either. Justice in reverse position means just the opposite. Roberto, <laughs> maybe I tell you a fortune instead. <laughs> The Knight of Swords. I don't like it. Looks like McRae. Niñito, you want to hear music, eh? Si tú lo quieres bailar, ti lo hace pareja yo. Car number four. Music could be better than this. Devil. Señor Zorro, you want music? The devil. Dark days for the future. There will be much trouble, Sita. Ten of swords. Swords again. He means a fight, a knife, a gun, a cage of death. But that is not for you, Sita, because that is a male. I will tell you only one fortune, Sita. Tonight will be a full moon. And tomorrow... Tomorrow would bring much trouble. Mr. Davis is called the priest and the nuns. Spectacular scenery. Everywhere you look, you see forms and imaginary faces. Yes, Mr. McRae, but has it got mountain lions in it? <laughs> we didn't come out here just to look at the scenery. Oh, you get your mountain lion, Mr. Walker. That's part of the deal, remember?
listen to them. They sound like they're fighting off a bunch of hostile engines. Mac, if you find them a mountain lion, are they going to be able to aim good enough to hit it? Oh, somebody will hit it, Barney. Yeah. Even if it's old McCray hiding out in the bushes, huh? <laughs> Hola, gatito. ¿Cómo te va? How are you? <laughs> you wanna play? <laughs> Come here, you little one. Are you the kitten of Sita? <laughs> you wanna play? <laughs> Do you like my heart? <laughs> Hello, Sita. I'm playing with your kitten. <laughs> Ay, 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 no. I want to wear my hat. I want to wear my hat. Eh? Family, Sita. You should be very proud of them. Listen to me. Tomorrow we'll bring the ship home for the shearing. I will not be with all my friends. Sita, they're going to hunt for you. Go away with your gatitos, go up the mountains to another place. How to make you understand? There will be guns and dogs and no place to hide. Go away, Sita. Far, far away. I will pray for you. Thank you. 
That's my dog. Easy, pego. Push him, push him. Go around him. Yeah. Push him, pego. Yeah. Very well. Good morning, Adil. How about some breakfast? Sounds good. One of them put up the sign. They get a big kick out of Ribbon Mac, because he ain't got anything in there yet. He will try to put Sita in there. Yeah. Come on. I got coffee and eggs waiting for you. This is a game for them. Like the horseshoes. Now, come on. You're gonna eat. Come on. Hey, Joe. Come here a minute. We want you to referee this. Okay. Come on, Etio. Which one? Oh, boy. <laughs> Six yeah, <I'll> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam Davis. Hello. Oh, yeah, this is Etio Silvera, Sam. Best sheep man in these parts. Good to know you. This is my friend Harry Walker. Hi. This the guy you were telling us about, Joe? Knows all about wild animals? Yeah. When it comes to savvy and wild critters, there isn't much that Etio doesn't know. Seems to speak their lingo. How about it, Etio? My business is a lonely business, so I talk to my dog, my sheep, my animal friends, whoever's around. Yeah. <laughs> talk to any mountain lions lately? Yes. Where? Here, there. She comes, she goes. Her name is Sita. She has three kittens. I told her that you had to kill her and she must go away, but she doesn't understand. Forgive me. You asked him, Sam. Yeah, I guess I did. Go ahead, 16, 14, shoot. At least we know there's a lion in the vicinity.
Coffee water's on the back burner. Don't use the front. I've been boiling my trap in it. Okay. This is for Sita? It's for the lion, Edio. I don't give a lion a name. You couldn't catch her with the dogs? Well, she's a pretty smart cat, all right. But I'm gonna use a little bit of catnip on her. That'll bring her in, and this will help. Won't hurt her because it hasn't got any teeth. Come on, Etio, coffee. If you kill Sita, soon the kittens will die. Four lions you need for one. That is bad, Mac. Very bad. Doggone him. One of these days, I'm gonna poke him right in the nose. There are the days when I like to just sit around and gab with him. <laughs> Don't catch your lion, Mac. You'll feel better. Estoy del suelo donde he nacido 
Inmensa nostalgia invade mi pensamiento Y al verme tan solo y triste cual hoja al viento Quisiera llorar, quisiera morir de sentimiento Tierra del sol, suspiro por verte. Ahora que lejos me encuentro sin luz, sin amor. Y al verme tan solo y triste, cual hoja al viento. Quisiera llorar, quisiera morir de sentimiento. Nice, huh? Hey, Joe. Is that uh, that cat? Is that the one he was talking about? Is Cedar? Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. That's his Cita. Hey, Max says we're going to be riding all day tomorrow. Yeah, I suppose so. Max says he's going to give that cat a good head start. Give her an inch, give her a mile. Won't make much difference. I bet that cat's pretty fast, though. No faster than a bullet. I guess those dogs don't give up so easy, do they? They might, but I won't. Try the action on that now. Oh, yeah, that's fine, Mac. Thanks. Well, gentlemen, all set. We'll be taking off at sunrise. Well, we'll be ready, Mac. Bright and early. Right. Okay, then. Good night. 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 talks to that cat. Sure. Like I talk to horses. Let's go. We got a heavy day tomorrow. Yeah, looks like it. Well, let's go. Y al verme tan solo y triste o aloja al viento quisiera llorar quisiera morir de sentimiento Turning this cat loose any minute. So why don't you go someplace else? 
Senor, I say to you again, Don Hansita, when you kill her, you also kill three kittens. All right, Hideo, that's enough. She wouldn't harm you or your friend, Senor. What good is it to kill her? Hideo, let him say his piece. What for? These cats cause enough trouble as it is. They kill horses, sheep. Even the state has a bounty for them. Sita does not kill sheep. She comes and sits with the other animals to listen to the music. She wouldn't harm you, senor. I'll show you. Eddie, oh, get away from that cage. She will harm no one. She only wants to take care of her kittens. Sam, don't move. Sita. Come. Sita. Come on. Go to your kittens. Go home. Vete lejos. Sita, come on. Go to your kittens. Hey, yo, that cat will jump you. Somebody will get hurt. I'll let that cat get away. Not to worry about it. My dogs will be on its tail and nothing flat. No, senor. Put that gun down. Sita, go. Yes, sir. All right, you got to pass it up this time, Joe. Okay, never mind. Go ahead, Barney. Sorry, Joe. For what? You just gave the cat a better start, that's all. Look, Sam, you've come a long way for your lion. Uh, let Harry chase the lion. Maybe he won't catch a radio. I hope not.
Yeah.